Roy Moore here with the Scout Patch Auction, joined by veteran uh, collector and actually gra senior graphic artist uh, who really made an impact on the both the World Scouting Movement, but the uh, Boy Scouts of America and the uh, Order of the Arrow in, uh, as a professional graphic artist, modernizing the image and brand presentation of, of the Order of the Arrow and the Boy Scouts of America. This segment, we're gonna go into things I did for the National Office other than the Order of the Arrow because mm -hmm. people met me and they could meet with me without making an appointment. Mm -hmm. They could deal with me without uh, you were in, I mean, you were in New York another Man department. Yeah, you were in Manhattan. Yes. We were now headquartered at that point in New Brunswick still. Right, right, yep. yes. Mm -hmm. And New so Jersey. they would call me and they said, Michael, when you come out, can you meet with me? And this guy, Raul A. Chavez, he was director of communications, and they said, we want to change the Boy Scout emblem. And we want to say BSA. So, do you see this pile? It's really a little pile, but it was really this five is times- stuff, folks. <laughs> five times thicker. I only bought a few because I didn't want to bore you. And so I did the BSA, and you see the eagle in there going sideways. I mean, it's conceptual art of, you were brainstorming this general request of how to redesign, modernize, update the brand image, the brand logo of the BSA. What you're going to start to see in here, folks, uh, these are concept drawings, different experiments, slight variations, but you're gonna to start to see this show up in other, into the Boy Scouts of America. Here, hold that mm -hmm. closer. And this is another variation of that eagle and a fleur-de-lis. So, so by putting the, the fleur-de-lis, but also the BSA, the S is, is diagrammed by a uh, reversing out the image of an eagle flying. This is on an angular basis, so again, he's, he's different uh, iterations. Each one of these is a, a different style. These have never really been seen publicly no, before. No, they've been the, in my draw yep. all these years. I did them in 1983, and they wore me down <laughs> before they decided to say, Michael, they decided to do a fleur-de-lis. And so I started on doing fleur-de-lis. Uh, so I did there? this one and more. Again, simplified branding images. And for any organization, this is a major decision, um, both to modernize and in an earlier segment, you talked about your design guidelines that you had learned professionally about uh, keeping things simple. Simple coloring uh, is, is the more professional look for uh, brand images, for logos. It helps in a variety of ways. And so these folks have never been, been seen before. These are you, uh, all creations of uh, Michael's. It went on for a while and then they ended it. I had it and uh, I did maybe 80 drawings. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. Uh, this shows from, I think, yes. the, one of the merit badges and stuff. Right. Again, yeah. many of these were only concept drawings that never did go to production, and so you might be seeing them for the first time ever publicly. But concept drawings that the Boy Scouts, that, that Michael had prepared for the Boy Scouts to consider. And there's uh, Cub Scout. The wolf, Cub Scout. Yes. Scout, and then exploring. Here's the hiking, and, and some of these logos not specifically produced, but uh, design concepts or elements carried forward into other later material. On they, they had a, yes, later on they did choose one several years later, mm -hmm. but when they had the 100th anniversary, I noticed similar things. It was a contest. They might not have been influenced by my drawings, but it was somewhat sort of mm -hmm. it, okay? Yeah. So while I was at National, Bill Hill caught my friend who was my childhood mentor, and I grew up to help him and do things for him, and he liked me a lot. Well, and we may, uh, back, let's take a little sideways on Hillcourt. Hillcourt was the uh, creator of the first patrol leader's handbook and one right. of the editors of the yes. handbooks back from the, the yes. 1920s and 30s. He forward. came here in 1925, mm -hmm. and he broke his leg. He wanted to go around the world, so he broke his leg in New York, so he asked the Boy Scouts for a job in the supply division. Mm -hmm. 
he, made a, he met a gal called Grace, and she worked for James E. West. So I, I didn't know this. <laughs> yes. And Grace was James E. West's secretary. Okay. And so James E. West met him, and he said, you're not doing scouting right. You've got to do the patrol method as Baton Powell wanted it. Mm -hmm. So then he started to do an article on Boy's Life every month into the 70s or 80s. Yes. Uh, it was called Green Bar Bill. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did the handbook for patrol it is. Yep, he did the, the field book in 1940. Mm -hmm. And when he did the handbook uh, in the late 70s, he was getting resistance from the art department. They said, this old fogey is telling us what to do. And he had done it before and he knew his stuff. Mm -hmm. So he was three months behind and he said, Michael, will you help me please? And I said, I would. So in a month's time, we caught up. And here is the original artwork, uh, the original sketch for the Hamburg cover. And again, what year would this have been? Uh, uh, 77, seven. maybe? Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure. Okay. And this is the printed version. And we made some slight changes where I cut this out of clip art and I stippled it. You know, if it's done, why not use it? But mm -hmm. I stippled it to give it dimension and it was placed over here. So that's the original artwork for that. And so I did that for Hillcourt. Mm -hmm. Then the director of, Unif of uh, National Awards, Ed Rison, he called me in one day and he introduced me to the chairman of the board of Mack Trucks. He was chairman of the committee. And he wanted me to do a design for the Silver Beaver. He said, that's the most important award we give. So this is my original artwork. This is the artwork uh, to show how I wanted to do the certificate. That's the original, I found it, okay? All right, mm -hmm. and from that, here's the artwork for the Silver Beaver, Silver Antelope, Silver Buffalo. And these are the other certificates. along with uh, the lettering. So I think it's changed recently, at least with the Silver Beaver, it doesn't look so good, but things last so long and people become in charge and they want to change things so they say they've done things, so. But, uh, you, but you did the design and the layout and the, and then and the choice of And after it fonts. was chosen, I did the artwork for all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I, only, I didn't only do the sketch, but then I did the artwork for all of them. After the sketch, you do a final mechanical. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll have to look at my certificate. Oh, this, see, this is, uh, I mean, the, the names always change here, but this is a Ben Love era signature on this. I received my certificate at my Bronx uh, awards dinner, and Bill Hillcourt came. And presented it. I didn't know that. He didn't present it, but, but he, he, was, was there, he, was, he was there, and he made a speech. Okay. Oh my gosh. But it was a big honor. Yes. And uh, I was thrilled with it. I used to drive him around to ship and different events. Uh, he was a friend of mine, and mm -hmm. I would visit it in his apartment, his mm -hmm. garden apartment, and uh, he would do things with me. And uh, he was a very nice man. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I bumped into the chief scout executive, in Australia at a world conference. I would, I would attend all world conferences as their photographer and artist on site, okay? And I bumped into the chief scout executive and very nicely I said, you know, our membership looks like Christmas trees. And then the second thing I said, I wanna show you how we can correct that with no problem. So I put two boards together with two uniforms, and I showed him the badges we had, mm -hmm. which every badge was a different color. I think I used the Life Scout patch, and patrol medallions, and the, and the position, uh, position badges. badges. And the other drawing had my badges. I had to speak to Jeannie Hudak. Little did I know she had to call up the Chief Scout Executive. It was stepping out of line a little bit. He uh. said, go ahead and do it, okay? 
And, you know, in a corporation, you have... There's hierarchy and pecking you know, order. Pecky, and pecky when order, I went to the Boy Scouts, I was able to break things. You, you were more entrepreneurial. You, yes. You're an artist. You're creative. Yeah. You're, you, you're innovative. I worked for the audiovisual division for three years. They had called me in to do an exhibit in New York in a very short time. Mm -hmm. I did it wondrously. And then I designed a truck to carry around all the Norman Rowe paintings and the... And the, the the structure that would hold the paintings. So I don't have it here, but I designed that truck. And then they said, would I stay? <laughs> and I stayed because my company had fired me as an artist. It was bad times in 75. And three years passed by, and surprisingly, or three and a half years passed by, surprisingly, the company that fired me hired me back as the director of production. <laughs> Can you believe that? So let's look what was here. So, so you came here, up with, or you said, we, we. So I, I wrote that and I said, it's been a few months since our paths light last crossed at the Australian conference. Recently, I created these two visuals to animate my idea on improving the appearance of our scouts. The uniform design a few years ago, with the continued use and adoption of colorful badges, sometimes has made the uniform appear gaudy. I believe the look of the uniform can be improved by coordinating the background of our standard insignia with the color of the uniform. Patrol medallions and advancement badges, such as tenderfoot through life and troop leader positions, could be considered for this change. At the same time, the troop leadership badges, which now measure three inches and appear crowded on a smaller size uniform, could re be reduced by a quarter. The only thing uh, and then I said, in concluding, all I can say is take a look at what I presented and knock it around a bit. The only thing that wasn't done, they didn't reduce the size of the troop leadership positions. So they, they stayed as three inch badges. Here is the same old dimension. colored badges. That your, your artistic eyesight said we can do better and, and still representative of the ranks and representative of the positions, but a cleaner look, more elegant look, a, a right. more stylish look. Right, right. And they adopted it. The Boy Scouts right. adopted it. Now, they asked me to do a rendezvous patch for the Jamboree. For the, yeah, order the early 1993 rendezvous. Jamboree. So one more time, I used an arrow in a red background circle, going beyond the circle and to the edge of the patch. Okay, this is it. Mm -hmm. It got a big play. And when I came to the Jamboree, they said, that's the new insignia of the Order of the Arrow. Okay, I said to myself, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I destroyed my own round red Indian. Okay. And I had done everything I could for the Boy Scouts. There was nothing much I could do in the future. So I was going to listen to a chief scout executive who I knew uh, that I used to sit with for three years every Friday. His name was Joseph Brunton. He was chief scout executive during 59 or 60 up until 67. And he says, Michael, anyone can be a big shot in the Boy Scouts. What's more important is your success in business. I want you to concentrate on business. So at that point, I started to concentrate on business. I worked for an agency that took one quarter of the work from this one big company that owned Skippy Peanut Butter, Helmers Mayonnaise, Mazzola Margarine, Nuco Margarine, Rit Dye, and, and North Soups, and several other things. And uh, I built it up, and they gave me a piece of the action, but I gave it, and four companies were doing it. But by the end of my tenure, we were doing all of it, hmm. and my little commission had grown. They couldn't take it, <laughs> and we parted ways. I went back to, I went to see my friend from high school, Raymond Rodriguez, and he had worked for Avon. And he sent me over to Avon. They said, well, can you work on Friday and Saturday? So I worked on Friday and Saturday. And they said, can you come in for a week? I came in for a week. And they said, can you stay? 
and eventually they offered me a position as type director. Well, anyway, then the big shot guy who ran a few studios said, my gal got to try for this. So they sent her up and they sent me down to the studio. And the studio did a lot of schlock work. Once they saw what I could do, they started to send a lot of work to this studio <laughs> and they wouldn't let me up. And that was the highlight of my career. <laughs> so I stayed away. Well, so yes, you, you sort of ad, you know, following Brunton's advice, Chief Scout Executive I Joe Brunton. I followed many of the things he told me. He was a genius. Yes. Yeah. So then the order of the hour was gonna become uh, 100 years old. So I decided to do something that would help the planning committee, pull it out, mm -hmm. to help the planning committee find their way. If I gave them guidance, they'd be good. I did many designs, but I showed them this one because I thought this would be the ultimate, the ultimate emblem of the future for the Order of the Arrow. And what did I say on it? I said, this 100th anniversary logo illustrates the arrow of service targeting the vigil triangle. You ready? Mm -hmm. For those who have gone through the vigil know the ceremony they and the service. They know what this is. Yep. The okay. presentation so of the here it is, penetrating the vigil. Okay? I, I couldn't order a few patches. I wanted to show them the best of the best. Mm -hmm. So I ordered 100 patches of the jacket patch, which basically was for the 100th anniversary emblem. And then I made small ones. I ordered 100, did ver different variations of metallic thread, and uh, had to do 100 and I might have broken up four or five different ways, mm -hmm. and I chose one. And this is what I said. The slogan, Century of Service, is a readily recognizable, straightforward expression of the organization's program over the past 100 years. Using the 100th year logo as the 215 NOAC emblem, it will keep the message visual program clear and strong, as was the successful logo used in the 1960 for the 50th anniversary of the Boy Scouts of America. We had done six different patches. We did the Jamboree patch, we did a Philmont patch, we did a Shift patch, we did a Camp Re patch, we did an Explorer patch, and we did a Cub Scout patch. They spread it on everything. Same design, but different... Uh, wordings or different, uh, different uh, messages. Wordings. Yes, okay. And I said, supplementing yarn and 100% embroidery will make the NOAC badge stand out while maintaining the same image. Only the words NOAC would be added, replacing 2015. So here's the 2015, and here is NOAC, okay? Well, I had other designs that said 100, but I wanted this because I think this is, should be the future emblem of the Order of the Arrow. Not in a circle. Who knows what will happen? But I was promoting this. And this is what I presented to the chairman of the National, or the National Order of the Arrow Committee. Mm -hmm. My friend Joe Brunton taught me, always speak to the guy on the top. So I handed this to him, he handed it to another, which handed it to the planning committee, which hadn't met yet. And you see what took place. The theme was changed from century of service to centuries of service, meaning every scout does a few years and it adds up to thousands of centuries. Or thousands of hours, hundreds of, you know, we, we're, it's not just the hundred years that we're celebrating, but the next hundred years that we're preparing for. Yes. And so that is where we are at with the, uh, the design here that you're proposing or put forth for the hundredth anniversary of the Order of the and Arrow. I did, and I did these metal badges and it's a award. Here's a silver one, here's a gold one. Uh, uh, a copper, copper tone or a, a, and a bronze, bronze one to be used as an award at the conference, mm -hmm. but anyone could earn it in their lodge with slightly different 
requirements. They could have, you know, the way you had designed this, a lodge could adapt this same design and put their lodge totem on, they could put their kind of branding, they could have, but it would be a consistent message than traveling around the country, even has, as you talked about in the 1960, 50th anniversary uh, branding or emblems of the uh, Boy Scouts of America, uh, same design, same word, but different wording, Philmont Schiff, as you said, the Cap Reese. Did we stuff. talk about that? We have talked about okay. this. Okay. So this hasn't yet been adopted. The design, it may not be adopted. The design could still be taken forward. We had something slightly different for the 100th anniversary, but we're now in our second century of Order of Daryl. So, Michael, thank you for your time and a sharing pleasure. these. these, these Roy, this. Pleasure, Roy Moore. <laughs> this is a unique opportunity, folks, to see what really happened behind the scene from the expert who actually created and moved our organization along. Thanks for, for joining us. Scout